Welcome to the Blind Sense Podcast. I'm Mike. And I'm Morris. And today we have a special guest joining us, uh, one of our gamer friends, one of my players, in fact. Hello, I'm Doug. So, I'm Doug. One... <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. Uh, that's fine. I am the voice behind the wah of Chicklet. <laughs> yes, and, you are. Uh, I, I'm a 3.5 baby. I I didn't start like Mike, uh, literally uh, sitting next to Gary and uh, yeah, and Gary and Dave at the table. I got into it in college, and I've been rolling along ever since. So. See, I already told him I'm in the same boat, and I didn't realize that that was the case for you too, Doug. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. C- college was really whenever I started. Right along with you, I didn't have any previous experience. Pretty much, Eric was your first DM, right, Doug? Yeah. Actually, of course, both. There you go. <laughs> actually, here's <clears throat> no. My first. It depends on what you what you count, but uh, well, I think I was actually in one your of first serious one is what I'm trying to say. But yes. Oh uh, yeah. Well, here, let me let me roll off on a tangent in the first three seconds here. <laughs> okay. Before That's what this podcast is about. <laughs> yeah. The, before Eric, I played with Adam, and I think I'm not oh, sure. Oh yes. He's yeah. Not I played... space, though. Oh that <laughs> Adam. Mm. He I actually think... wasn't that bad though until later. But yeah, I still have my character sheet from his campaign. Heck yeah! Do you? Well, yeah. I don't. <laughs> I don't even remember what I played back then. So there you go. But uh, before that, I actually these poor guys. I ran across the basement in uh, Wilkinson, the the dorm we were. I was living in. There's these three guys. Didn't know them from anyone in the world. Sitting there playing. What the heck is that? I walked over and I basically said, "Hey, what are you guys doing?" And they're like, "Oh, we're playing, we're playing riffs." I'm like, "What the crap is that?" And it was, it's a, a vaguely post-apocalyptic uh, D20 role-playing system. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Well, Thank what's you. it?" Yeah, I'm like, "Do you mind if I play with you guys?" I'm like, "Sure, what the hell? Here's a book. Try to vaguely keep up." And I'm like, "Okay." <laughs> yeah, try to keep up. <laughs> yeah, so so I'm digging through this thing and I'm like. What's the closest thing you got to a knight in this system? And like, oh well, there's these guys that wear power armor. I'm like, all right, shit, yeah. Long story short, nothing really happened. One of the guys was playing some sort of chaotic idiot, a uh, cat person, that <laughs> proceeded to murder, rob, and then crap on someone that he <laughs> murdered, robbed. And yeah. I did, I did the cringeworthy first, uh, good aligned knight thing that you did in order to try and. Start Smite shitting him? up. No, no. Of course he snuck off on his own. I did the I did the thing where you try to start shit without actually starting shit because you're good aligned. You go into a bar, you sit around, and you hope someone starts shit with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's no. the way everybody's first campaign starts out. Excuse uh, yeah. me, good sir. Do you have a beef with me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but nothing happened <clears throat> in the game or out of the game. We, we ended shortly thereafter. I, at, I talked to them once or twice after that, like, hey, we're going to play again. And I don't know if I was just weird and they never called me back or if they had tried it once and never did it again either. But uh. Maybe they found this, you know, you know, this uniquely unheard of thing in our profession slash, you know, gaming experience, and that's uh, girls. Yeah, <laughs> Unlike uh, I, looking at the, the guys I was with, I doubt it was that. There, there were so many groups though that's like we're gonna play D and D, and then they'd fall apart. I mean, like that first one I was telling the audience about in episode one with with Dusty, that fell apart, you know, because Dusty couldn't keep doing it. And I remember one of the groups that I didn't end up joining because one, they had too many people on the residence hall floor that wanted to be a part of it, and two, like I was a little weirded out because I didn't fully know that you know, half lit, halflings were basically hobbits. I didn't know maybe halflings were half-breeds. It's like, if I want to play a, a half-elf, I don't want to join shit with a dude who's like, I just murder halflings and bathe in their mm-hmm. blood. It's like, eh. That's most of the D&D world, I thought. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a or lot. Or is that Kender? It's definitely Kender. <laughs> yeah. I, I like Kender better than Halfling, so there you go. But uh, just to... <laughs> They're to, definitely more interesting. Just to throw an intro in here, we're going to be uh, probably discussing this right as soon as we get back from the, the title bumper, as well <laughs> as we are going to try to discuss Path of War. So uh, right now, I'm going to do the thing. 
It's magical music from the sky, Doug, and it, it'll happen. Try to do it a thing for each episode, so the audience magical identifies. Magical music from the sky sounds yes. like is is fly on the bard list. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, no, but it should be. Who have a special archetype? No, it is not. Hmm. Hmm. Can, can I make a closet sled? Oh my gosh! We didn't tell him that story uh, yet. Now we're making fun of Doug's wife. Oh, yeah. That's why we waited till they came on till we could talk about it. Like, <laughs> well, to, oh, you yeah. can't do it justice unless Don's here to also join in, but yes. Oh, so yeah. So my girlfriend, now wife, joined us for a couple campaigns. She was pretty good. She was in us quite a bit. Well, in the beginning, she was in the entire first campaign we ever did, pretty much together. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have her character sheets too, but she is very. She makes very interesting characters. We'll give her that. Yes, very interesting. They're full of flavor. <laughs> Sorry, so, Amanda. That's <laughs> I'm not gonna. Yeah. <laughs> so the closet sweat sled. Oh my gosh! What was she even playing in that one? What was her Swift actual character? Something. Swift. Oh, Shadow Swift. Okay. Shadow Swift. Yes. See, and that was, was one of the things that I meant to bring she was up. An assassin. That's yeah. It. I meant to bring that up in like the first episode, but we kind of glossed off whenever we got off the rails like we do, is that she had uh, an assassin type with death attack, which is really mm -hmm. damn useful. So it led to things like you, she could study you for a round and then do a death attack on you for crazy three critical rounds, damage. Yes. Uh, three rounds? Okay. Yes, three okay. rounds for assassin's death attack. Once again, I am the fluff guy, not the numbers guy. But I remember... <laughs> That uh, Night Flutterer incident that we discussed in the first podcast. Yes. Uh, one of the things that I omitted that I w was sorry that I did was, um, at, by that point in the campaign, I had an item called the Mask of Lies, which could allow my bard to, uh, basically, to anyone who couldn't see through the illusion, he could look like any creature of a similar size uh, of whatever race was your fancy. So, there were basically whatever the evil halflings were in, in that part of the abyss. What were those things? They were from Book Jared? of Vile Darkness. Jared. Yes. yes. Book of Vile Darkness, Jared. Yes. But uh, some of those were part of the convoy, and I shape-shifted into one who was having a panic attack, and this... This other uh, NPC comes up to me. He's like, wait, what happened? Ah, they were... Ah, ah, ah. I just keep babbling incoherently for three rounds until Amanda gets a death attack on him. <laughs> what did you do? She ended a lot of encounters very quickly, honestly. But it yes. was around... And we distracted them enough that they weren't paying attention to what she was doing. Yeah. The, well, the, the best part was... A man who's nice and she's cute and she's not, she wasn't like a big power gamer. And so Eric she would let her. She did things to be fun. She didn't do anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, Eric would let her get away with shit that we were suggesting to her behind the scenes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, like uh, the closet sled. I mean, that was just so funny. You couldn't. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So she wanted, there was a couple things. She was the. She wanted cutest... to be able to fly, but she couldn't afford to buy the stuff at the time. <laughs> The cutest damn assassin you've ever seen. It's like, how did, yeah, how did it go? Cause she just randomly caught one or two closets, and then she's like... She kept catch. we kept catch because we were in the abyss. Because it was the demonic campaign, we worked yeah. for the Lord, we were in the abyss. So every time she came across, ca a, 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 across a closet, she basically <laughs> captured it and basically made it one of her slaves. Okay. And she bought a pair of boots of levitation. Yeah, that's right. She couldn't and afford she the boots to fly. She the harness up to all these closets so they could pull her around and she could fly. <laughs> it the was best... very cute. Especially when she used the, but, but can I uh, do this? 
because it's just so cute. Yeah, I want to have a closet See. sled. Okay, yeah. Well, there's one thing that I think we should let in at this point uh, that I purposely omitted in the first podcast was that um, I had discussed with Eric um, the possibility of basically, I think I'm the evil one who started it, and then Mike started following suit where like I was basically co- collecting women. One of, one of every oh, yeah, I co- race. I, yes, I... Because yeah, I think the that. first one was an Aaron and the whole deal was well, the wet layer of the abyss that we were going to is like they're gonna murder her if they see you've got an Aranese and she's left alone. So did we convert her? We converted her to chaotic evil. Didn't we? we did convert her, but uh, I mean another thing that I discussed with Erica. I know some people are gonna call bullshit, and yes, all right, but <laughs> like this was one of the things we were alluding to with like DM has final say. DM can let you right. get away with things. Um, I would stow her in my bag of holding to hide her. And Eric and I had discussed, it's like, normally, yes, as most of you probably realize, you put a living being in your bag of holding, they will suffocate within X number of rounds. But we had talked, oh, well, if you just leave the opening... Just leave the opening just a little bit open. Yeah, then, uh, then that works. Which later led me to... Uh, putting more living entities in there, including a uh, imp that we had captured. And I throw him in there, and I'm like basically turning my bag of holding into a handy haversack, where I threaten him as like, I'm going to ask you for something, and you better give it to me, lickety split, or you're going to die. <laughs> better hand it to me right and quite quick, or you're in trouble. Yeah. Which caused, <laughs> in turn, Amanda to take... <laughs> Uh, I can't remember whether it was a gnome back when we were on the... She had a gnome, yes. Yeah, when we were on the, the regular Earth realm. And a closet in there, too, if I remember correctly. <laughs> but then Eric would poke her because, like, he, uh, he would always, you know, use, like, a cutesy voice whenever she's doing stuff because it, it amused him. And yeah, I, right. I, I remember there was the, the whole thing where he would have, like, the gnome starts messing around with she had a, a scalpel in there as a torturing device. So he's like, he cuts his she fingers had off. In her back. Yes, she did. Doug, uh, he was, he was, um, Eric was to Amanda's, like, he cut his fingers off. He's like, let him bleed, I don't care. <laughs> she, she was so bloodthirsty, man, in the end of that campaign. And I, and I don't remember... <laughs> I don't remember whether it was we were watching Futurama at that point or whether this came from somewhere else, but it just makes me think as a parallel to Dr. Farnsworth going, is like, tell them I hate them. You know, like, Eric was mimicking Amanda in his version of her voice, which is way too high and squeaky. <laughs> and he was saying in reference to the gnome, tell them I hate him. <laughs> she was always... Clean that bag in there, you little whatever. You know, mm-hmm. you know and it was like, well, I don't have any fingers, mistress. Well, you better not get any blood inside there. Oh my gosh, that was the best one. I remember that. <laughs> <laughs> was like, Make sure you get all that blood cleaned off of that inside. Well, and then Eric also <laughs> got a kick out of, can I trade a soul? Oh, oh that was, yeah, that was the part there. She, so... <laughs> Can I trade my soul to this demon so I can stick me in the evil machine to rip my body parts off and give me new ones? Yes. And she basically, yeah, she wanted the was, different legs that she ended up getting, right? She ended up getting, yeah, de- demonic legs or devil legs? I don't remember. It was something. It was but they, were, they gave her an extra plus two to con, if I remember correctly, right? Yeah, she didn't want the legs, though. She wanted... But it was it better was, than... What? She, she was just glad she didn't get the tentacle arm. I remember that. Yeah. Because I know she didn't want... She wanted dexterity, if I remember correctly, somehow. Dexterity. Yeah, yeah that, that, that machine... That better than what she could have gotten. Maybe. That machine with the randomized, that's just a whole bunch of no thanks, was my response <laughs> yeah. to that. My character, too. Yeah. <laughs> oh. What the all heck I can, was that? All I can think of now is... Yeah, kill shit! Good, 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 good. 
<laughs> Long story short, whenever we got bogged down, I was playing Chaotic Evil. Emphasis on the chaotic part. What uh, was your race? I forget that part. Fry Keen. Fry Keen, that's right, yes. Oh, uh, yeah. heck yeah. So, yeah, anytime we got bogged down, I was just like, you know what? And I, I like, he had HD and was constantly cracked out on sugar. It's like, it's like we're talking too long. Let's kill shit! Let's just stop it! We're gonna kill shit! It worked out good, though. It yeah, awesome. it got, got us on track. We were, we were killing shit again in no time. <laughs> Fall between that and... Quad Lanny Badger Swords! Heck yeah! Oversized multi-weapon fighting. Heck yeah! Tempest Prestige Class and heavy dose of GM Heavily not GM modified, shit. by the way, but yes. Yeah. Hell yeah! Quad Wheeling Bastard Swords. Oh, it was great. No, oh, no, guys, it was nice adventuring with you. So, yeah, so that's that's leading up to the end of the campaign. We'd get into our, into our heads. For some reason, we don't like the Demon Lord Grasset. Well, Eric didn't like him. That was one reason, but yeah. Yeah, and we, we decided we were going to shit on him, and we were going to try and take him out. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now, Greatest for, triumph we ever had, I think, but yeah. Yeah, fortunately, this was around the time Fetish Codex 1 came out, so we weren't facing the CR-30 version, we were facing, like, the CR-20. 22. 22. Yes. Yep. And we had a good month out of game to plan this shit. And, Mike, you came up with the... What was Elm- doom? Yes. Yeah, Elminster's... Otherwise known as Elminster's effervescent... Vagent? Effervescent summons. It was a spell from Fre- Freyron, that's all I remember. Elementor's Effervescent... I can never pronounce that damn thing. Let's put it that way. That and a Force Cage. Yeah. Now, one of the things we did mention whenever we talked about that in the uh, first podcast, Doug, was that uh, now, I got it wrong. I think I think Mike corrected me that you killed a Marilith in two-thirds of a round. Is that Two-thirds right? of a round, yes. Oh, one-third of a round. That was a good one. So, yeah, we were 15th level? 16th? 15th. 15th. And, yeah, and so I had, I had multi-weapon fighting, improved multi-weapon fighting, greater multi-weapon fighting. Thank you, Wizards of Coast, for the book Savage Species. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> so this, uh, so we go, we enter, we blow open the doors. No, wait. Yeah, we walked into Grazitz, and we had some... Because we had, Morris had gotten his daughter earlier, who was introduced us. And we had a uh, prisoner, the, some, some minor demonish lord, the rat something or other. Oh, yes. Yeah. Night Skitterer. That was who we were talking about earlier. Night yeah, Skitterer. Night Flutterer okay. was one of his things. And Night like, Flutterer. That's we couldn't a, yeah. remember. Night Flutterer. Okay. Yes. It sounds like you can't either, Doug. I can't remember what his proper name was, but that was whenever we knocked over that oh, caravan. I, I wrote in the dirt was, fluttering. We found out night. later that he was an actual god. So, yeah. Really? Yes. He yes. actually became a god at some point. Arguably, huh. though, for the purposes of of our campaign, he was still he was a. He was just an, a former minion. So. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we we hauled him in. We're like, hey, we've got a prisoner for you, and, we and he was on our side at that point too, because yeah, he, he wasn't was? so much on yes. our. No, he wasn't. We had talked him into doing it, and we would take out Brazic, and he believed us. He, he <laughs> believed us. has an amazing boss skill. He yes. believed us, but he still didn't want to do it, and it was a matter of we didn't really give him a choice. And right. We, ah, I remember him being somehow uh, reluctant. Because <laughs> Amanda Death attacked him originally and stunned him, remember? Yeah, uh, that's right, because she, she had that special ability where instead of making it deadly, she could paralyze you. That's right. Yes. She paralyzed him for like two minutes instead of killing him. Oh my gosh. But yeah, so we walk in there and we start shit. Like But now to be fair, there's five of us in the party. Um, we have a there was you, who was the fifteenth level mass of destruction. There was <laughs> me, it was I was an ultimate Vegas. Morris mm. was a mind bender bard. Amanda was a you know, rogue assassin, and then Eric's 
the MPC, which was a cleric who was there for basically backup. Mm-hmm. And then we had a we had a, we had some sort of drake. We had too. a rage drake. Yeah. And we had that minotaur that held the door shut. <laughs> and also we had uh, the daughter who just stayed in a lot of it. Well, she was mind. Morris had her mind bended and dominated, so she wasn't doing anything anyways. Mm-hmm. Plus, I had my drow cleric for healing purposes in case I needed it. Oh, I had my familiar, remember? Oh, my howler familiar. <laughs> I think that was about it. We took but quite he, a posse in there, but on the other side... On he the other had... Side, there were six succubi, four of those Lilithu things... A Marilith. Two, two Glabrazus and a Marilith in Crest. And then there was a bailer outside that was pounding on the door trying to get in. But we had also a dimensional... Anchor. Lock or anchor? Which is the big one? Lock. Mm -hmm. Lock is the higher level one. Right? The, the scenario effect? Yeah. It must be. So you couldn't dimensional teleport anchor is the, is the targeted. Yeah. We had that so you couldn't teleport in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so the, we hope we hope to God that we didn't die. <laughs> <laughs> well, how'd it go? Because I think you cracked off something like Time Stop, followed by the Force Cage and Elminster's Bubbles of Doom. Yeah, I, I Time Stopped because I had a scroll of it, and I had a Caster's Glove, which allows you to cast anything from the scroll, so he didn't know it was in there. <laughs> and then I also had a scroll of uh, the Elminster's whatever the hell it was. Efferent, whatever the hell. I can't pronounce that. I can never pronounce that. I Again. gotta look that up. <laughs> it's E E E. Elmenster's effervescent if some whatever it is, it's surely all about the alliteration. We just call it bubbles of doom because there's a bunch of bubbles that float around you that that basically oh. you can and you can have them go around each person. So like Elminster's effluent. Eflu e oh shit. <laughs> Effluent Epuration. Epuration. That's what it is. Epuration. For I get the two I get the last two cubes. It's a ninth level sorcerer wizard spell available in the Magic Feyrun book 3.0 edition. Great, Great spell though. Yeah, it basically it lets you if targeted magic spells hit you, you can basically pop a bubble. And you get as many bubbles equal to your caster level. So I had seventeen of these bubbles. Because it was minimum caster level to cast a ninth level spell, blah blah blah. It was out of a scroll, you know. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. One so, spell per level, ten minutes until yeah. Uh, now here's the thing: you could, you you whip them around all of us to incoming to negate in incoming hostile magic, and they could, yeah, one bubbles ex uh, blown for each spell for level. Spell. Effect. Yeah. No. Oh, really? Did we do it per one spell? Yes. We didn't do it right then? <laughs> we didn't? No, it's one sphere per spell level negated. Oh, oops. Well, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they updated I'm looking at a 3.0 book, Magic of Faeron. Maybe it's updated somewhere else to be even nastier. <laughs> that would make it much nasty. That would actually, that makes it a lot less weak. That makes, okay, we did it completely wrong. Right. So. <laughs> Remember, <laughs> kids. <laughs> If your DM doesn't catch it, it's technically not cheating. <laughs> That's true. Very true. Yeah. I kind of uh, feel bad now, though, so... <laughs> but whatever. It's all good. It might be somewhere else, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Eric didn't have the source I did, and he trusted me, and that's probably a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> now, to be fair, I didn't do this on purpose. I just read it wrong, but yeah. Yeah, Magic of Faerun. Well, because remember when they uh, attacked the souls of whatever with the... Uh, Oh yeah, what's that? Oh, oh, that's when we uh, that's when that's when we invaded the first layer of hell and tried to take it over from the demons. The demons tried to take it over. Souls of Despawn. What? Whatever. Okay. Basically, in the River Styx, there's these islands. These souls show up on the first layer of Abyss, and we basically, as demons from his demon prince, we invaded. We took it over. I used the spell. Something field, uh, some kind of field spell. Anyways, basically, 
when so much power hooks up, it casts a spell. So I think it's a seventh level spell. I think that one's in Magic of Run too, but yeah. So basically, I kept shooting out a bunch of electricity spells out at fucking dead devils that popped up every time. Oh, we're going to teleport right in there. Whoop! And it blew up a spell. And, yeah. and that's basically how we took over hell. We never finished that campaign because, yeah, we just got distracted with other things. And yeah, you know how that works. <laughs> Life gets in the way, sort of thing. <laughs> I can't remember the something feel was. The feel was the last word. That's all I can remember. Huh. You know what? I think we did it right, actually. Transformation field, I believe is what it's called. Elminster's Effluent Epuration shows up in the Player's Guide to Feyrun, which is a 3.5 source, which is one sphere per spell. Okay, I didn't do Okay, I feel better. Thank you. Okay, I used an old source, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> actually, the old source is probably better, honestly. That's a ninth level spell. Basically, it's less you, ridiculous. Well, you, you basically yeah. take balance and you bend it over and you make it your bitch. <laughs> At <Yeah>. ninth level, <laughs> ninth level spells do that on a general on general. You know. Yeah. To be fair, I think Pathfinder corrected a lot of that stuff to a certain extent, but even still. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. still miss some of those old spells like that. You know what I mean? Oh well, shit! Yeah, you play casters. Well, yeah, I miss that shit too. <laughs> Yeah, but it's not like I use them that often. You know what I mean? It's not like I, you know. Yeah. Well, if you got a month to research that shit, then yeah, you can come up. You you should be able to get a spell that can, you know. Because well, remember, we we're working for a demon lord. I mean, I had him give me items that we could pull off her because he wanted to get rid of grass too. Because he was like, that sob wouldn't give me a a demon bane scarab. Damn it! <laughs> what? No, I I thought he did. Uh, I don't remember getting one. I, but... I remember he wouldn't give you those swords okay. for nothing. But... <laughs> All right, yes. so that's that's a whole story in itself. Okay, so we're playing. <laughs> I just got access to Fey Run books, and I found some shit called Glass Steel, which oh, back yeah. then, yeah, made your weapons automatically plus two. I think I'm like shit. Yeah, I'll do that. Meanwhile, my dumbass doesn't know that basically everything in the entire abyss requires a cold iron weapon to do shit to it. So I basically got plus two to hit and plus two to damage for the downside of minus 15 to damage every time I hit someone. So I'm like, son of a bitch. I like so, glass steel for armor. Yeah. Because it That's was pretty light cool there. and strong as adamant. Yeah. I just got a boner just from that explanation, too. It's like, yeah, that's, that's, what, like, I mean. that's what I mean. It's two of the great. best items and plus double it up. Plus, you can wear, like, you know, flashy clothes under your armor and look cool as shit doing it. You know what I mean? Oh, fuck yeah. The best, I'm sorry, the best dressed character ever was my Lumi, which was a... Oh, yeah. It was, yeah, oh, some no creature head. from, yeah, some creature from uh, the uh, positive energy plane that glowed. He had glass steel armor. His head with, floated above his body, so he couldn't be decapitated with horrible weapons. Yeah, fuck that. That's not the point. The point <laughs> is, he was... Falling in glass steel armor with Yisgardian heart wire shot through the whole thing. That was something that gave you bonuses against crits. To be fair, this was also an epic level camp or uh, campaign or er, pretty much a one shot because I don't think we went by. <laughs> he was bawling, bawling, yeah, glowing through like yeah. Anyway, long story short, yeah. So I had glass steel weapons which didn't do shit it the abyss. Yeah. Oh yeah. He was um. I think you he was like uh, you were playing a cleric, and what the hell was the other thing you were playing? Well, the Lumi cleric was an Eye of Ra prestige class, and the other guy was a uh, half celestial saint. Or no, oh, he was, no, he was on um, shoot. No, because this was a different one. I played the half celestial saint epic character in another campaign, which was awesome too. Plus, <laughs> it was, what I, have? I had like a forty charisma on that guy. Hell yeah! Oh, anyway. oh that one was the one. The... Diplomacy. That was the for the diplomacy one. Yeah. And um, you just blew every diplomacy check out of the water. <laughs> yeah, that was a pretty good one. Because I made the mistake of checking. You're going to need high diplomacy checks, guys. Yeah, I shouldn't have said that. But yeah. <laughs> you needed like a hundred to sh like shit. Yeah, I give some more. You had to roll like a two to pass. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but you got additional successes if you blew a pass at like another ten or something. I forget. I what. It, was a, it was an adventure out of Dungeon Magazine, regardless. 
Yeah. Now, Doug, do you remember like I do negotiating for those weapons at that point in time where you wanted me to try and get the price knocked down for you? Oh, thank thank God you brought us back on the track. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, I got the glass steel weapons. They're useless. I'm like, I got to get cold iron weapons, but I'm going to swap no, out. You ended up getting those. We're trying to negotiate for other. They basically functioned as cold iron, but they did other. Oh, that's the one that lets you suck the souls out. Oh, yeah. So we can trade the souls for currency, if I remember correctly. What I didn't get cold iron? You, I think you had cold iron at the time. But you were trying to get those weapons that let you suck out souls. Yeah, that's out of complete warrior, I'm almost certain. It was, yeah, it was one of those special material things. I don't think I mean, it was cold iron, though. I think I Amanda think... wanted that. But, but I remember it's... that's what you were trying to get. You were trying to get those weapons, because we were... We were trading souls in the abyss at that point. Yeah, so... Thinuin. Thinuin, that's what it's called, yeah. Yeah. Complete Warrior, page 136. I swear, we should we should put Amazon links into our into the YouTube. Anyway, if, so... If somebody starts paying us for this, right now it's, uh, you know, completely open that anybody can even take samples from this if they credit us, so... <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, we're we're not doing it for the money, folks. We're doing it for the love, and that's my story. At least not in the beginning. We're and I'm sticking it. to it until somebody <laughs> writes me a check. Yeah. I'm a cheap bastard. If somebody wants to pay me, I'm more than happy to take your money. <laughs> I will be your corporate whore. <laughs> Unless wow. your name is Trump, I will be your corporate. Uh, Jesus, Mike, the politics. The uh, third, so Trump. third episode in, we're already we're already, we're already shilling out. This is this was yes. a pretty quick uh, sellout. Yes. <laughs> no, we need to we need to let our our growing audience, which we want to continue to grow, know that we will sell out at our first opportunity, so that oh way they God. can't be disappointed in us. Anyway, <laughs> so the thing you want is that sucked out souls amanda wanted because she wanted soul gems to eventually trade for more unholy body parts that's I will... right well but we, we were getting so many souls at that point yeah but well, I, not even I'm... to mention the halflings we, halflings we traded in for the halfling <laughs> circus <laughs> i was trying to leave the halfling toss out for at least another two episodes oh, that was too awesome to leave out well Hey, this was an evil campaign, people. This is so. I'm yeah, not, I think I don't normally like playing evil campaigns, but this was an ex excuse. I to go think crazy. it was at that point that uh, we had basically. I was uh, operating as a carnival barker at that stage. <laughs> you know, like drawing people in. Yeah, well, it was, it was less that... of a halfling uh, carnival and more like you know when you got the guy in the dunking booth and you take the. Yeah the ball or the tomato and you throw it at the target to try and dunk him. Except the halfling threw the ball. Lava, that's all. Yeah, yeah no, the, the halfling threw the ball. The halfling is being the ball and you are a murderous demon that we brought over See, from another realm. I probably wouldn't have been so murderous if that stupid Jerry wouldn't have tried to assassinate me on our first mission. I forever hated halfling. Did you kill him first? Well, remember that guy? We, we went to that Jerry in town with the dome. Yeah. That guy, right when we were ready to cross the bridge, and he tried to stab me and kill me. Yeah, that I, well, I, I was think, forever. I think in, he did the stuff. Killing happens at that point. I think he did stuff like that on purpose, because I mean, like, <laughs> you know, well, you know there like was. I'm pretty himself. sure, right about the time of the the halfling toss, we also had run into that weird monastery where he was making fun of Jeremy's behaviors because Jeremy. Oh, that was a, way after that. that yeah. Was, yeah. Okay. Was, then I'm starting to blur it together. Because <laughs> the, 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 the monastery, I think, was the first place we went, and then they sent us to kill off the halflings because they were threatening the monastery. But, uh, you know, this, we, that's I, where we picked up a lot of our spare women at the monastery. But, yeah, well, <laughs> I did anyways. Well, that was where they Sorry, were... Sorry, ladies. They were, like, <laughs> some sort of, of weird asexual, I think, Eric was <laughs> got to be totally pure and then we just corrupted their religion to be all about sex <laughs> pretty much yeah because you know that's what you do <laughs> pretty much it was it was basically every stereotype you can think about D&D players was get, all involved in that first <laughs> thing so 
Sorry, oh, ladies. You this enter the food bar. typical behavior from us most of the time. It was just one of those things. Yeah, all right. right. You, you keep pushing that angle, man. I'll, I'll... <laughs> yeah, but no. Here's the part that got me. So if you're, watch, if you're listening to this, you've probably seen... What's the one where... Um, oh, love is a plus one broadsword away? And the guys are like... You enter the palace of the Bethuvian demon whore, and he's like, I roll to make out with her. And, Mike, oh, I was oh, telling oh. you this, and Mike goes, oh, yeah, I've got that adventure. It's under my bed. I'm just like, you're killing me. <laughs> under my bed? It was on my computer. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had actually played it already. Oh, my gosh, yes. Yeah. Somebody had, oh, maybe it was Dr. Eric, I think. Ah! Dr. Oh, no, Eric is one of our friends from Clarion, where we will all went to college, Clarion University of Pennsylvania. Yeah, why don't you oh, just why don't you right, just anyway. announce that out there so people will track him down? They'll never know who it is because he doesn't even he doesn't even work in that town. But anyways, I can tell his name, but I'm not going to. Well, because I also I can never remember his last name. Yeah. I have it written down though, so that doesn't matter. But is he used to? We used to get into some really crazy stuff with him. Because it did six cents for like I did. So, well, he also you, went all out with his with. You, uh, were, his you remember the setup. druid with the hamster and the pink tutu or pink tutu, don't you? Know? <laughs> oh my gosh! So that was an epic one-off Monty Hall type of thing. Oh god, that and was the, like crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The final battle was he took a I I don't. I don't remember. All I remember is the scenery. Yeah. So we fought. I no, believe. no, it was Marilith. That's what it was. A Marilith, and we were like 13th level. We were supposed to be on some, like, rotting head out in the abyss <laughs> or in the chaos. It was a floating god in the ethereal plane, maybe? Like a dead body of an ethereal god. Yeah, which he represented with a stuffed animal. With a teddy a, bear. A teddy bear with a tutu and a, uh, I believe it was a toilet paper roll shoved up its butt. Well, the toilet paper roll was supposed to be the tower that was coming out of the thing's butt. Yeah. But inside, and inside this thought. hole, basically the whole idea was we were supposed to come to this, we were supposed to res rescue this halfling's, was it familiar animal companion, which happened to be a giant gerbil. Oh so, my, gosh, my god, right. this whole thing's a it's giant anal probe joke. Bear's butt. That's all I'm saying. Was the Dribble's name Lemmy Winks? I can't remember. It's something like that, yes. Yeah. <laughs> like In case anyone didn't get the joke from where Mike left it. <laughs> yeah. It's That's better than horrible. the... The Gerbil was <laughs> named so Richard fun. Gear. Yeah. Oh. We were really... <laughs> Eric, Eric was just busting up. Because me and Eric played... Eric was... Well, of course, he's a doctor. He can see, so... But me, me and him joined together to basically co-DM this thing and we had a bunch of people and we just because there was what? It was you, Doug. There was Matt. Oh, yeah. I played the... Galen was there. Amanda was there. I think there may have been two other... Oh, Redneck, maybe? Carol? Yes. So there was like six people in this party. Okay, for those of you and who Judy don't is. know, just going to throw out your real quick... Uh, redneck is, is not like Mike's not making a slur there, okay? Oh no, we, redneck is another Mike who we just call redneck. Yeah, we had like forty-seven mics on one floor, so there and was first blind time Mike. Me, he told me to call him redneck, so yep. it's not a slur. There was blind That's Mike. Right. There was redneck Mike. There was gay Mike. We had all flavors of Mike, okay? Yeah, but anyway, so <laughs> I don't want to call my weapons. <laughs> I'm trying to get back on D&D. So I went to Cold Iron Weapons. We went to the um, Ifridi in the City of Brass. Big time uh, weapon forgers. And we're like, hey, I need four plus whatever Cold Iron Bastards. That was a Salamander. Salamander, that's it. Yeah, not a Ifridi. Yes. So, uh, some fire thing. Way, but yeah, yeah. those fire base. <clears throat> and, and I said, hey, I need four of these. And there's a Gari, I'll do it. We came back, you know, however long it takes. It. Crafting magic shit takes forever. But yeah. uh, we come back, and he's like, all right, that'll be a fuck ton of money. And I'm like, oh, shit. He's selling the glass steel stuff for half price, trying to buy this shit for full 
price. And I've got a bard here with a bluff of nine bajillion. Morris, <laughs> would you be able to talk to this fine sir and convince him that I already paid? <laughs> now, I wanted to revisit this story. I'm glad we ended up going here eventually on podcasts anyway, because there's an angle that I don't think I ever told Doug. Was the the argument that I had made was that the the weapons should have been done already, mm. and I kept vehemently arguing arguing with this salamander is like you're way behind schedule. What kind of outfit is this, you know? And he's getting testy and defensive, but I was trying to to bring it down to get him to maybe knock down his price to shut me up. Well. Mm. Eric was DMing this in such a way that he's like, no, that guy's meticulous. He keeps immaculate records. There's no way you're going to convince him. He so, gave him a, yeah, he gave him like a plus 10 or 20 bonus for having good records and be able to look right at his book and say, hey, this shit's yeah. right here, you know? Yeah, so it's at this point, Doug, you're like, maybe it was nobody's fault. <laughs> he's just kind of... I'm backing out of this, <laughs> yes, yes. And I and I admit that I was wrong, and I leave, and then it's all calmed down, you know. Um, but the thing I never told Doug was if that had turned ugly, I would have gone. Well, that's what he told me. <laughs> <laughs> you told me that a while back. You did. You You're got right. out of it. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I yeah we're playing evil, and I said during when it was starting to go south, I'm like. Let's just create a giant red tornado of blood in here, and um, then we don't have to worry about this shit. <laughs> it's like, and uh, I think talk us out of that, but yeah, yeah, because he, he, he was said, like, well, I these think are... it was a salamander that was in the in Gorthauer's tower, if I remember. Yeah, he was yeah, in, he was in Gorthauer's good graces. So if you kill off one of the direct aides, more or less, to the demon lord you are serving, predictably that's not going to go well. Uh, if only we had an assassin who could make people like die instantly and hide their bodies. Because they never you had to talk your wife. You had to talk your then girlfriend to that before she was your wife. So yeah. Because uh, they anyway. never. Yeah. They never would have traced it back to her. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, what the what the funny. hell happened to Larry? Oh shit! These guys are going around with his weapons. <laughs> All right. Anyways, we probably so, ought to actually break into the topic we were planning on from the get-go. Path of War. What and up, Path uh, of War Revised. Or yeah, expanded. put up by expanded. Dreamscard Press, if I'm not mistaken. That's yes, correct. Dreamscard. So you got yeah. Dreamscard Press, Path of War, has new classes. The uh, Warder, the Stalker. Stalker, and Warder, the Warder, Warlord. Or something. Warlord. Warlord, thank you. Okay. Yep. So... Trying to go through them a little bit. Uh, the Warder is the one I'm actually playing right now. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah, and it is like the ultimate tank turtle, um, and uh, yeah, it's it's actually a lot of fun. Uh, actually, we haven't played in a little bit, so I apologize. It's I'm been gonna a long time since we played. Yes. Yeah. So I actually have the uh, thing open in front of me to look at. But long story short, it's awesome. So it's a cool class. I, that's out of all the classes, that's probably my favorite one, honestly. But yeah. Well, it, it kind of handles a niche that it's kind of hard to do in regular Pathfinder, which is kind of the draw aggro mechanic type of thing. And it has that with with Armager's mark. You get that second level. You you mark a, an opponent, and then they take like these pretty nasty penalties. Uh, to attack rolls or to or they take a spell failure chance. Everybody but you. Yeah, and so it makes it's, it a yeah, it makes it really really a, a losing yeah. proposition to attack the squishy members of your party. Considering, considering the warlord can wear heavy armor and carry all the types of shields except for tower, I don't think it can carry tower. <laughs> but they tend to have one of the better armor classes in the game. Fantastic! They actually get a rising bonus to it. I think. Uh, I think that's a. I think it was but yeah. Yeah. Well, the Aegis is a plus five by seventeenth uh, level, just overall to AC. Which is. Or oh, sorry, that's actually to allies that are within ten to thirty feet of you. Sorry. So. Well, still though. Yeah. Uh, he gets sorry clad in steel, which uh, boosts. Boost your max dex by two by twelfth level. Right. But uh, it's 
I'm sorry, it's pretty flippin' sweet. Uh, partially because of the maneuvers, that's really the main meat of the class. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like martial spellcasting. It really is, but it it focuses a bit more like the stamina system from. Uh, to a certain degree, but yeah. then I, 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 I love the flavor of the system. Mm-hmm. I think it's a bit overboard on some of the things they go through, but eh, I don't know. Well, the all right, so we we break into two camps here. Mike is, let's say, uh, what do I want to say, skeptical a little bit. Is that is that uh, fair to say? A little skeptical of the system, and yes, I, and I skeptical, but yeah. Yeah, and I like it. I'll fully admit that there's, and the, even the creators have said, uh, there's, there's a, uh, two, um, two schools that put out a little higher damage than Broken Blade probably is one of them. Broken Blade is one of them, and the other is um, Golden Line maybe. No, Golden Line is the tactical one. It's um. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Primal Fury. Primal Fury. Primal Fury is all about charging two-handed weapons. Think your typical barbarian type file. Those are style. by far in the original system by far the worst out of the. They're really ridiculous in some cases. They put out a little higher damage if you if you optimize for it. Broken Actually, they put are, out a shit ton more damage from what I can tell. Whenever compared to a full attack from Marshall, they do put out slightly higher damage or comparable but uh depends on what maneuver you're using too well like there's like i don't know if it's primal fury i think it is primal fury do the primal fury or the dragon one thrashing dragon that's the two weapon fighting one thrashing dragon there's one basically where it's like oh i can everybody within reach i can make an attack with each weapon i have at my full attack bonus i believe you're talking about the ninth level broken blade one no it's Uh, like the ninth level it's it might even be lower than that. It's really ridiculous, though. You gotta, all right. You throw these stuff out, and I gotta, I gotta look it up because <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's, it's. I'm pretty sure it's the uh, primal fury, one of the pure. Basically, if you have like two weapon fighting and oh, maybe it is the thrashing dragon. No, I think it's well. I found one that's similar. There's a, there's a couple different things that have basically the same thing. Yes. Where but basically you might as well just take, uh, what the hell is the feet chain where you can attack people? Whirlwind, whirlwind attack? Might as well just throw that out the window because it's no good anymore. Well, whirlwind attack always kind of did suck because it took dodge yeah, ability, combat expertise. Five and attack for everything within your attack reach is ridiculous. Okay. <clears throat> so if we are talking spinny, spinning flurry rush, it doesn't quite do that. More or less, the initiator makes two attacks at full base attack bonus per opponent within his reach. Which is still twice as many as Warlord attack. However, uh, Broken Blade strikes uh, typically use close weapons or unarmed strikes. So... Uh, ah, but, that, but but if you slap that on a large creature, I suppose. Basically, okay. if I stuck that on a dragon, you'd all be dead. All right, um, it is a seventh <laughs> level maneuver, which requires. Oh well, yeah, if you stuck it on a dragon. But that's the thing; they don't take into account that thing, and also they have, especially from Dreamstar, they have. Creatures with lar- with reach, like the half giant. Uh, half giant has powerful build; it doesn't have reach. Well, but whatever. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I no, I do understand. There's ways to get reach. There is large. Cr- there is large characters that you can play in Pathfinder. <laughs> uh, permanency and large person. Uh, yeah, that does open that up. Well, there's also the one race that's actually large to start with. Uh, the Trox. Rocks, and then you can in, it's a humanoid, so you can enlarge yourself even bigger to huge. That ugly mf is humanoid? I it might be monstrous humanoid, but I either way, still. Yeah, well, yeah, it, but that one's even an advanced race. I don't think that's typically open to normal starting. No, but you still have to take that into account, though. That's the thing, is what I'm saying. 
You no, do, I'm, but I'm not saying that I'm not saying this is a completely an overbroken system all the time, but it can be very easily broken. It can, but more yeah. easy, more easy actual pattern. Oh. Okay, all right. Look, everything is broken if you combo the shit up right. We can we can pull out stuff from anywhere and pull it out. Uh, I think the the best ones were Nightstick Meta Magic in 3.5. Uh, currently, uh, what's that? What's that feat that has you do calculus to get free meta magic? Oh, uh, that, the, that was a whore, that's bad, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know who the hell made that feat, but that was ridiculous. Yeah, so but secret that, geometry. Yeah, that's it. And then the, now, look, if you look at it just on paper without actually reading how quickly you can basically calculate that stuff, it's not so bad. But realizing that you can just like snap your fingers and make it even more ridiculous, it's. But the thing is that's. That increases, uh, you know, well, whatever damage, which is very weak for, you know, that's the weakest way to go with wizard and stuff, so. Which damage? The. Oh, just damage. Damage for wizards is weak. <laughs> I think, though, this blasted, points out. Blasted is very weak for wizards. This points okay, out so another thing that we have said since Square One, though, is like, you know, run this shit by your DM. Let them know what's going on. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. I... <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've had, I haven't had a problem with anything you've done with the water at all. So you know what I'm saying. Well, I appreciate that. I I'm not I'm. See, the the original Path of War is not even as bad as Path of War expanded. Just oh. take a look at the broken fucking. What, no, what is it? What's the uh the hourglass one? Okay, now okay, I'm... that whole discipline is completely another overpowered. Okay, but let me. Let me also let me give a baseline of what Path of War is to people that might not be uh, familiar with it. A lot of people, I don't think a lot of people, I don't think anyone really has a problem with the amount of damage martial characters can shell out. But there's a decently sized subset who's at least reasonably vocal about it that have concerns about the amount, the, the, um, what I want to say, the flexibility of martial characters to handle. See, I, don't even have, I don't have a problem with the flexibility, even. It's just the, well, like uh, the broken, the, the hourglass thing. There's mm -hmm. a power you can get at 13th level that makes it less you stow away on a time stone. Which in 3.0, 3.5, you could not do until epic levels. You can do this every fucking round with this stupid, this, this character. Well, first that of all, fucking ridiculous. Well, first of all, there's an epic feat that lets you add like an extra d6 on a critical. So let's not immediately say that epic stuff is overpowered because that's. But being able to stow away on a time stop is overpowered. I'm sorry, that is a completely and utterly ridiculous. All right. Well, here's a question: If a wizard can cast a spell right off the bat that freezes time for multiple rounds. And the ability, the rounds, yes. And the ability to hop on it and hang on to something your opponent is able to cast is that overpowered? The ability to when hang you can on do to it four levels before the wizard can even cast the spell. Yes. It, all right. Look, if you're gonna haul this stuff out, you gotta at least tell me the name so I can look this shit up. The seventh level power in the whatever hourglass thing. All right, seventh level, which is thirteenth level. You can get it. 14th. Actually, 13th. Is it on half? Well, you get first level powers at first level, <laughs> and you uh, get second level powers at third level, and so forth and so forth. Okay, does it work that way? All right, so... Yes. <laughs> Works just like a wizard. I'm pretty sure. In my mind, I might be wrong. It's either 13th or 14th level, but just still three to four levels earlier than anybody else. Yeah, seventh level, Riven Hourglass. Count, like the third uh, one down. Third one down? Third or fourth. I don't know. Okay, so going through the seventh level Riven Hourglasses, uh, first one's a counter called Beat the Clock. Oh. Uh, you can uh, act, initiate this counter... Let me look it up. ...to immediately take a standard action as if you had readied an action. You can't do it more than once per round. There's there's only three. Sands of Time, with which is a strike, make two attacks with a plus four... And deals damage, and possibly nauseate uh, if they don't make a fortitude save. And 
temporal dilation, which is another strike, um, you melee touch attacks and no damage. Uh, target disappears from, from reality for a D4 rounds, and then the target reappears again. I'm not seeing anything that lets you hop on a time stop. There's some cool shit there, and 7th level... Yeah, I gotta look up. Is that 13th or 14th level? I could have sworn it was uneven, but maybe I'm off. But a lot of... Okay, so right now we went through some higher level... Uh, we want some higher level uh, strikes and stances and stuff of Path of War in one of the more magical disciplines. And the Riven Hourglass is all about manipulation of time. And so they have a lot of things where if you created, created a discipline all around like haste and slow, they, they, get, um, they sometimes can pull off extra actions. They sometimes can... Um, I, I'm not... 100% uh, familiar with everything in there, but a lot of the stuff is all around... Um... Oh, no, it's an 8th level one, sorry. 8th level? All right, let's look at that one. It's God, of the... God of the Hourglass dance. Okay. Your this immune... is the power that goes all, all the time. This is a stance, so you can only have one stance going at a time. Uh... Unless you have a higher level of ability that lets you take two stances, which there is a couple classes that lets you do that. Uh, yes, I believe they're capstones, but yeah. Um, so you're while you're in this stance, you're immune to slow. You so can't become full power then. So, but yeah. Yeah, you can't become fatigued or exhausted, and you can always act as a surprise round. And if an ally or an opponent uses stop time stop, you and you're within fifty feet of them, you can take a single standard action during the duration of the spell. Uh, that's not the one I was thinking of. It's basically the hop along one, but in addition, you can take an additional move or standard during your turn, which I'm sorry, that's actually the more impressive part of that. It, it's basically 15th level, uh, you have permanent pounce, which, considering a barbarian can get it at 11th level and a summoner can get it at uh, first, uh, I don't think that's. It's nice, it's something that a marshal totally wants. But it's not something that's outrageous. It really just, especially because that's another thing about Path of War. Path of War attempted to unshackle martial characters from constantly having to do a full attack to, in order to get their full benefit. A lot of their strike, uh, actually, I would say about 99% of their strikes, which are their main way of doing damage, are standard actions. So effectively, everyone in Path of War has a pseudo pounce. You're allowed to move and then make a strike. And then you're... Str a lot of the Path of War stuff, you, if you do a full attack, you're still doing darn decent damage, just normal for your character level, but the strikes open up an option so that if you have to move, you're not basically crippled by not being able to get your full attack in. Especially well, thrash. Yeah, which is... The way Pathfinder deals with that is a feat tree. They can do this all the time without having to deal with feat tree. Which feat tree gives you pounce? Well, I'm talking vital strike, but yeah. Oh, good lord, vital strike. That thing's painful. And See, it's, it's, I, I like vital like, Whatever. <laughs> it's, well, it's nice, but it's, it's a band or a gushing wound. Not like it's nowhere near pounce. See, the thing is, Marsh do ridiculous amounts of damage as it is. They and do. to patch it up so they can do full attacks and all this other stuff would just make it worse. Well, they they do. do by far more damage than a wizard ever does in a round. And that's and that's, uh, that's really where we're at, is that the wizard has a vast variety of things they can do and handle any kind of situation. Whereas a they still have to be prepared for. And a scroll, I mean, a scroll, cheap, and a, um, so, so much of the into it, they can be prepared for anything. It's okay. Hang on a second, guys. You're breaking up there. I, I do agree with you. Okay, guys, 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 guys. <laughs> getting really <laughs> choppy I'm here. Or stop. You're still in a force. Okay, do fine. Fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> stop. All right. How are we coming through now, Mars?
Uh, was Choppy there for when Mike was still talking about it? It could have just been me connecting. All right, well, let's keep talking for a second longer and see okay, what Okay, that seems to be working yeah. better, so. All righty, then. Uh, where the hell did we leave off? Well, if, if by chance, you know, we've had some technical difficulties, folks, and if you heard my door open because I was trying to creep out while these two were talking, it's like, if we're going to fight, I'm, I'm having a beer. <laughs> <laughs> We weren't fighting, we were just discussing. Uh-huh, we yeah. were having a stern discussion. <laughs> we not that we were screaming and calling each other names. I mean, come on. Well, that's because... Uh, later, we've been drinking more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've got it set the same as it was before we're rolling. All right. All right. Then, I, I, I have to look up his name. Is Blake Davis dead? Oh. Blake Davis, the guy who runs Archives and Nethys. And I, I say that with all nah, he's due really love. I, I say it with all due love for the guy, but I'm just like, come on! I haven't seen a post or anything. Like I know he's vaguely updating it, but but I don't know where he's, nah, he's at. Just really far behind. Yeah, he's got some of it updated, and so I'm looking. I know, I know. This is about a month or two ago. I started, he's like, yeah, I'm really far behind. I'm trying to keep up, but I'm with a bunch of crap in my life and blah blah blah. Yeah. And, you know, I'm, I'm never going to throw stones at him because he's doing something awesome. But the one thing I want, I would really ask for, is some sort of running tally of where he's at. So I know I can rely on him for, like, books, you know, 1 through 20. And then, like, right. like the last three, it's like, ah, i got to haul my carcass over to uh, D20 PFSRD uh, to find that. Because um, I prefer archives, but I just need to know. Oh, yeah, I do, too. Because, well, it's it. Exact names and everything for. Mm -hmm. well, I think we That's plugged fine. them even in the last podcast because it's like, I like uh, D20 PFSRD ever since you had shown it to me, Doug, just because it may not be exactly organized the way that I want it, but I can usually rely on them to have the most recent stuff. Yeah, the, and it's good, but I'm. I'm always a little leery because it's a bunch of volunteers all doing it, and so it's kind of got uneven quality throughout. Because it's whatever it does, yeah. The volunteers really were interested in, which is great for for going through and consuming a large amount of information. You get yeah. as much of it down well, as you can. Well, you kind can, of but... run into like a Wikipedia dynamic problem on that, where it's like entries that everybody's interested in. You have many people going over it and checking it for errors. Whereas you start to go off to this, it's like, oh, you didn't cite anything here. How are we sure this is correct? Yeah, someone put in, like, an awesome acrostic kind of thing for uh, different archetypes, what they trade out in the various classes, and then they really haven't kept it up to date, like, on any class, basically. And so you've got to scroll past it to get to the bottom where they do list out the various archetypes. Whereas Archives of Nethys... He, he doesn't have the acrostic, which is, you know, a downside, but he has the stuff that trades out listed. And so, I don't know. I prefer Archives of Nethys, just the one thing I need to I know is where he's at. Where is that? And I, nothing against him, just, just let us know where you're at, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but that's, that's my rant. <laughs> Here. Hit record. Mike as a punch out, like, or a punch in, rather. Um, you had said about Path of War, you think that it's not completely unbalanced, but it's more... Well, it's not. Too, no, it's, not. It, it's more balanced against itself, though, you had said? Oh, yes. I think so. Well, if you, if you set a Path of War character up against the normal Pathfinder fighter slash... What, it's going to destroy those characters, no problems. They did say that they were trying to aim for a sweet spot about, like, Tier 3 or Tier 4, which is your Alchemist, your Magus, um, War they Priest. They have shit ton more stuff to do them fighting for stuff. Now, Doug, would you say you were gimping your warder at all, or is he pretty much what he Not is? Not really, because he hasn't really hit anything that's really doing that much more disgusting, so... Yeah, technically, I, I have gimped him. Technically, I have uh, a tad, but not. Yeah, I'm a I'm a dwarf. When a strength intelligence race would be better. Yeah, that's uh, the which, correct, but yeah. 
Which there's like none of those. I think Wear Crocodile and one of the Lashuntas Ooh, are strength intelligence. That's one of the things I also have a problem with. Hmm. They get four skill points per level, but they're also an intelligence based class, which is no no. Basically, one of their main intelligence, and they get four skill points per level, which is kind of crazy. They should only have two, because they have way more skill than they really need to have for what they do. That's been awesome. Nice. Honestly, I haven't really done anything in skill points. Well, because you can get a you can get like a plus 40 bonus to these checks without even really investing much into it. You know what I mean? It's like 40 plus whatever you roll. I'm like, hey, yeah, I can't get that high of an attack roll. So you're negating every attack roll ever. You know what I mean? That's if you use that ability, of course. But yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's really the only... They shouldn't have based it on skills that way because it's too easy. Now, if it was unmodified skill ranks, you know, if, but you can add so many things to those skill bonuses like... Well, like, you think about it. acrobatics. Okay, you take, you get 10. Say you got 20 from your, your level, so you're, there's 20 ranks. Mm-hmm. And then you take, well, I got a 10 deck, so there's another 10, so that's a 30. Then you got skill focus acrobatics, that's another 6. And then you have whatever the hell the other skill feat. So that's plus 40 right there. That's not counting any magic items, any just skill boosting items at all. You know what I mean? It's just like it's, you can have you can get those numbers ridiculously hot. Yeah, that's the only real. That's the honestly that's the biggest problem I have with the system. Honestly, I think they could have found a different way of like maybe only your skill ranks plus your ability modifier, nothing else involved. You know what I mean? That would have been a fun because you you still need a chance of failure. But if if it's your skill is so high that you can never fail. You're, yeah, it's a it's a crazy. shitty you know tightrope. I mean? It's a shitty tightrope. Anytime you end up making something like that, because yeah, you want it something good enough to stand out. But if it's too good, you know, it becomes like the the World of Warcraft joke on the Blood Elves. It's like, hey, let's form a party. You've got all these cool stats. It's like. Nah, thanks, guys. I, I think I'm just gonna do my own thing, like alone, because I don't need any of you. Huh. Well, see, it's not even it's not even that the skill thing is that bad of an idea. It's just your entire path is based on one skill, so there's no point in putting any skills in anywhere else. Well, mm. except for the normal reasons for skills and other places. But you're completely crazy unless for your your whatever skill your ability uses to not pump that as high as possible. Now if you're now if your ability run off a couple of different skills, that would be a way to balance that a little better. Yeah. Because like the one skill, the broken mirror one, runs off craft for God's sakes. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make a craft I'm gonna make a craft mirror making check to block that to block that attack against me. I'm like that doesn't even make any fucking sense. You know what I mean? It doesn't even make any sense. You know what I mean? In society. Yeah. It's almost, it's not like you're going to put that. That is by far the most ridiculous one, but it, yeah. You it's know not what like mean? you're going to put that anywhere else where you're going to be as like, man, I'm the mo. I make the prettiest mirrors for the town. Everybody buys them for big gold. I, but the thing is, the craft skill is so specific because it's craft mirrors, crafts, Profession, you know, mirror make it's it's a couple just really specific craft skills that nobody in their right mind would ever put points into otherwise. <laughs> now, if they would have just made it a straight craft skill, like hey, and, you know, equal to your you know any of your craft ranks, that makes more sense. It's just the, the whole mirror thing. It's just craft mirrors, yeah, or craft paintings, or it is just like. That is so specific and just so weird. Yeah, I'm gonna. Bl- I'm going to block your attack with my massively Im- impressive painting skills. Well, you know, even with like painting or drawing or you know chalk art or whatever the fuck you put into. Well, that's what I'm just saying. I could, so no, like weird. I could see uses for that. 
Where it's like just the uh, the Shattered Star campaign that we're we're currently you know working our way through. There's opportunities to draw things for what, but it's like a mirror. It doesn't come up very often. No. Yeah, but even so, it's like it's got a use, and you could detail maps while you're going through dungeons, things like that. You know, but see, to a certain extent, drawing some of these things because you're a pathfinder and you're you're supposed to you know, be interested in history and, you know, all that stuff, that at least makes a little bit more sense in the context, you know what I'm saying? But it's like, if you're but, a mirror crafter, on the other hand, what the fuck are you doing in dungeons, dude? That's, that's <laughs> what I mean, I don't... That's why I mean it's so specific. It's like, I, uh, I took professional... There's like three different craft skills you can use. Mirror, something to do with mirrors, and I don't remember what the other two were. I took profession it's pottery. So specific. I took profession pottery, and I hope to shit some little Hillian kid doesn't come into my shop. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's, I, it was... You smashed all my pots. I was looking for rupees. You're in the wrong country. You're <laughs> in the wrong world. Well, see, like, like craft armor making... Or craft armor makes more sense, because I can use my craft armor skills to deflect this attack. That makes more sense to me than I can use my, you know, massively, um, you know... My craft painting skills to block this attack. I just, it just, you know, I mean, it just doesn't, I don't know. I can't remember I don't know where. I not even anything that specific, but it's just, it's just weird. I can't remember where, and I'm fairly certain it was not D&D &D in context at all, but I saw something somewhere where it's like the enemy that you face as a boss, like, paints the next thing that is going to attack you. I wish I could remember where that had popped up, but that was a thing. I could swear that's a Kirby thing. Well, I'm sh yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure that that is, but I think I saw it somewhere even, you know, other than that. Maybe I'm crazy, though. Maybe it is just Kirby, but... <laughs> yeah, so, no, we, we do have vastly different opinions on it. Uh... I don't say we're, it's vastly, I just don't... Maybe vastly, think yeah, too much, is... but... Well, one of the things uh, that I wrote down... To bring up was the uh, Mike. You had a problem with the Steel Serpent class, uh, or Steel Serpent? Ser oh, that was the the poison one. Yeah, Morris. That's the poison Mor one. Morris oh, basically what? acts like um, uh, Jerry Springer in this. It's like, it's, yeah, it's I'm, like, I'm like, probably gonna uh, make this one mono because you guys are talking a lot and like you're coming out of the right normally, and I'm coming from the left. Because when Mike and I are doing yeah. back and forth banter, that made sense to me. But if we're gonna have a, a three way, so to speak. Um, I'm probably going to just make it mono so it's less people are like, they're only talking out of one ear and Morris is being really quiet. <laughs> yeah. I guess. But it's like, because, yeah. I'm, because I'm a fluff guy, again, as I mentioned 47 million times on this podcast already, um, it's harder for me to, to dicker with them over numbers because I don't, I don't care. <laughs> you know, like, the flavor, yeah. that's what I'm all about. Well, yeah. Well, see, I don't even have a problem with them boosting the poison in the steel, in the steel, whatever the heck it is. But uh, I think the same yeah, thing goes before. Steel Serpent form. was uh, under Art of the Blade in that book, and I think the the main thing, Mike, that you had taken issue with that we were discussing the other day as a group was um, the the amount that it tacked on, like a DC mm -hmm. forty onto poisons, which. Um, the one stance, which is a first level stance, by the way, gives you a half your level and a bonus to the poison DC stance. So at 20th level, that's a plus 10. Then there's the maneuver that tacks an extra, an extra plus 4 on top of that 10. So that's a plus 14 to poison DC saves. Okay, yeah. So I, well, 40 was way out of line there, but still, the, the spirit of the argument is somewhat there. Right. Uh, yeah. Which, like I said, poison's a really shitty way to do anything because it costs so much. Yeah. But plus fourteen is a little ridiculous. Is what I I'm remember. Like, was it the was it that same half fiend bard that I had for demonic campaign? I think it was instead one that I built right after that. I'm pretty sure. Maybe. There was there was one that I built right after that. That just so happened that was another deal where I had an imp in my back pocket. And that guy, we had built him as a poison healer bard. So the, because of him being a poison healer, 
Um, you could drink poisons as like, potions. Yeah. I remember that. So that it made it somewhat more cost effective for me to use poisons. And again, this was three. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. That was Book of Vile Darkness, something. Mm -hmm. Oh but yeah, that, that's there right. There was another yeah. supplement that we we had uh, tried to find the other night. Um, I actually managed to get a hold of Eric for seconds and seconds and ask him about it, but I could not remember what the supplement was we used back then. Um, that was really not. It had like one of the most useful things to me though, is if you like they had to be like you know something like ten or thirty year old coffin nails that were rusted into the coffin lids. Like oh could, yeah, it was um, it was alternate crafting, and you could use different. But you could pull the coffin nails out, and there was a percentage chance that they would break. But if you went through the trouble to dig it up and, and pull them out and use them as a material component in your spell, you could get a secondary effect if you were used. Like you could you know, then use poisons as a a other material component when you cast a spell on someone. Hit them with right. a secondary poison effect. The catch, I believe, was, and again, this is all from memory, folks, so if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. <laughs> the catch on it was the poison would then come back and hit you as well. But, because I was a poison healer, bring it on, baby. <laughs> yep. Yep. I don't know. Anyways, back to the steel, whatever it was. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, it does boost. It does do boost poison saves by a damn decent bit. So, a lot. I would I would like to also point out your other last words were simply and poison's a shitty way to do anything. <laughs> so, and and then yeah, but when you make it so high, like a an extra fourteen to some of those saves, you even a fighter with well, a thirty eight, con and everything possible. Still only makes it like twenty five percent of the time. That's ridiculous. All right, well let's let's put it this way. Let's say there's let's a say... DC forty to pass a, a, a fortitude save on a poison is crazy. And you're right, DC forty is the highest you can get with standard poisons. Dragon bile is a DC twenty six to start with, and it and with a plus fourteen it could be up to a forty. That does a D three strength. For one round per six rounds, and it only requires one save to stop it. It's also there's another one that actually does con damage. Those it's fifteen hundred dollars too. Uh, I don't see another DC twenty six here. I am. I, 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 I have it somewhere, but it was con. It was a. Oh no! What's Black Lotus, which is a DC twenty, so thirty four. Right. Even with that, you're still failing half the time. All right. Well, let's actually run the math here. Let's say. Honestly, you're to get that plus 14, you're a 20th level uh, character, so let's say a 20th level fighter. So you've got a plus 12 uh, uh, base fortitude, and let's, let's say you have an 8 con, or an 8 modifier, that's 20. Alright, plus 8, plus a 5, five whatever. Uh huh. So that's a, tw that's a 25 fortitude save. All right, a 25 against... Not a, taking, you know, taking the... If you take the the feats, which how many people take the damn feats? Not many. Well, say you take one. That's just your 27. Even, to be honest, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even say that because you're a fighter, you got a good fortitude. I wouldn't have taken a great fortitude. So let's say 25. And so, and so let's say your Steel Serpent Poison user uses Black Lowe's Extract and has a 34 DC. So you have to roll, it's 50% of the time you'll make it. 55%. Er, That's a good save. Yeah. And a wizard is not making that at all. Yeah, but it's also 4,500 gold in order to try and do it. And it is it is a D6 con. So honestly, yeah, it's someone that's focused in poisons. Something that's normally clear. a shit option. Attack the wizard oh, yeah, first. Yeah, but still. Yeah. See, the thing is, that's not so bad unless I use it against you. Actually, the new poison rules in Unchained are kind of crazy, but I'd like to yeah, actually see them. Yeah, I'd like to see them used. I'd like to see. Uh, I'd like to see poison usable. That's the thing. I've tried to make poison using characters, 
and it's just brutally expensive and inefficient because it's way they're way too expensive for what they do. They real talk. They should yeah. be about half of what they are, honestly. And they don't really do enough effect to make it worth it. Like Black Lowe's extract is probably the one that's really <laughs> worth it because it's a D six con, it's two saves, it's six rounds, it can Oh shit, it has a one minute onset. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? It's con jack. So, so this shit gives you ten freaking rounds to get yourself a neutralized poison or an anti-antipoison antitoxin. But the thing is, you don't know you have it. What do you mean you don't know you have it? You know you're poisoned. How do you know you're poisoned? But doesn't onset for one minute. There's a point to that. All right. Still. So well, you, you and your cursed logic can take a back during a battle. Oh, no, they don't. So Black out. Lotus Extract is effectively useless for any PC trying to use it against someone in a battle. Oh, yeah. Then what the hell is your problem with that DC <laughs> booster? We've already run through the one with the highest DC is kind of a shit poison, a dragon, dragon bile. It's a D3 strength. And Black Lotus Extract doesn't onset for a minute, so it's useless in battle anyway. Let's let's roll down. What's the next? I thought there was a DC 22 in here. There's a 24 DC uh, Purple Worm Poison. That's a D3 Strength again. Well, there, there's uh, two tactics. It's actually not bad. 700 bucks. There's right, two one tactics that clearly you need to Con's use. Con's the only one that's really bad because that's the one that kills you. There's two right, tactics that, that clearly kill. you need to use that will fix both these problems, Doug. It's attack the wizard first for a PC without, you know, preset tactics. I'd say that goes without saying anyway. And run like a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I think I think that's really what it comes down to is the, the best advice for a martial character to fight is to attack the wizard first because he's going to fuck your day up. But I think oh, that's... Yeah. Hey, well, I, did you just say, oh, well, yeah, because... That's I think that's partially why a lot of people are really uh, are really interested in the Path of War, and they're coming out with. Uh, uh, sorry, that's actually another one. Path, people are interested in Path of War, and they're also interested in uh, Spheres of Power, which was a new way of doing wizards, so that they wizards weren't a jack of all trades. Wizards were different depending on whether you're a weather wizard or a fire wizard or a time wizard or yada yada. They were the people are looking for a way. To, to get martial characters and spellcaster characters on the same track. Because a lot of the times it feels like as a martial character, you're Conan or you're someone else like in a low-tech, gritty... Uh, uh, what's, what's, what's Demon Eric's favorite book series? I have it behind Black me. Company. Yeah, you're, you're, you're Conan or you're Black Company where, oh. or you're King Arthur... Whereas the wizards are doing shit like, like cracking the world, and they're uh, don't don't go ah you have shit <laughs> called meteor swarm you are literally calling down so, burning flaming rocks from the heavens so, to smite your foes. Doug, do and you, you one do you full want... attack from you and the wizard is dead, and I can't kill you with the meteor swarm. That's why you must live in a labyrinth for the rest of your days. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, one full attack if you know which of your multiple mirror images to attack, and, and you see, get that's, his blur and displacement, and you also buzz, are actually there. Conan the Barbarian is shit. I saw Conan the Destroyer the with Arnie. Is, by the time I'm casting Meteor Swarm, you probably have a way to see through my mirror image. Oh, yeah, you want to talk about the expense for a constant well, it's, it's expensive item? For seeing, yeah. yeah, holy shit. But the thing is, I can still hit you about four times with a meteor swarm, and you still can kill me with one attack. At a 20th level wizard? Full attack yeah. fighter? Full attack, but a first level, uh, a 20th level fighter, a full attack on a wizard, he's dead. You didn't dump your con, did you? <laughs> no. Do I ever dump my con? No, but... There's pe people say... These new spells, and it's like, oh, it does 20 D8 damage. And they're like, oh, they're too, you know, it, it does too much damage because you can kill a wizard because it maximized. 
So that's 20 V8. That's what is that? 160? Yeah. They're saying you can kill a wizard completely with one spell. Because it's 20, 20 V8 force damage, by the way, which I think is ridiculous, but yes. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, force is always supposed to be a die damage lower. Yep, it's 20 D8. It's, it's one of those uh, overcast spells, so it's a psychic spell, which uh, I think psychics in Pathfinder are really ridiculously powerful. Hmm. I think they're even more powerful than wizards. For one thing, they, they, they're they spontaneous, so they can spam the shit out of that spell. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, well, psychics have the most powerful spells in the game, enchantments. Plus, their blasty spells are all force damage. What the fuck? They shouldn't be that high. I never paid attention to that crap because I looked at that book this, and I'm like, every and single you know one of these designed, assholes is a spellcaster. <laughs> you know who designed these undercast spells? Mona? Jeremy Smith from fucking whatever. Dreams Car. Really? Yes. He's the one that designed the spells for it. Hmm. It's 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 like his first Pathfinder credit. Well, other than his own company, but yeah. Hmm. So and and also, if it does enough damage, it can kill you instantly. Oh no! It's uh, if it if it can do up to a quarter of your damage, health damage, it will decapitate you. Well, decapitate one of your limbs. So not your head. So okay, yeah, decapitation <laughs> usually. Strictly means head, but um, to yeah, I can't think of the word for sever a limb. We'll go with that. How's that? Amputation. Yeah, it will amputate one of your limbs. Okay, let's well, even let's, say which limb. Well, let's let's step back it one second. It might be your terms. favorite limb. How would you feel about that? If if it amputates my favorite limb, I can still walk and use my hands and see. <laughs> but that's <laughs> and let's step back to the Jeremy Smith thing. Jeremy Smith. Uh, was not a designer on Path of War. Oh, I know, but he's Dreamscar, though. That's he is, what I'm saying. Yeah, he's, he's Dreamscar. Uh, he was, he I did do. I, I honestly like the psionic system better than I like the Path of War system. So, but the, Did you just say the guy that made the overpowered thing? Uh, you're killing it. And like, and you I'm like just the, saying that's... <laughs> I'm just saying, I, I like psionics better than I like Path of War. I think right. it's balanced a little bit better, but yeah. No, I'm not saying it. I, I really love the flavor of Path of War. Don't get me wrong. I love the flavor. There's a lot of things I do like about it, but then there's some like, okay, I go, what the fuck were you thinking when you made that power? You know what I mean? <laughs> and I think maybe once they come around and they re-edit and redo the second, it might not be quite so bad. I think... Honestly, like, size modifiers should never stack, like, in that whatever power. Oh, you're, you're killing me. You're throwing this shit out here. It's size modifiers shouldn't stack. It's the broke, it's one of the broken blade ones. Where your weapon counts, it's two size categories larger, and then any size, any size bonus, you know, from whatever also stacks. Uh, count as one size, that's a stance. Which I just oh, saw. Oh, wait a second. Holy shit, thing, I see. called. It's a third party spell, but it was uh, basically you could become colossal size with your thing. Uh, was it was it Path of War, the third party? No, it was no, it was Path of War. So it was Legendary Games, I believe. It was oh. each, a spell compendium, but yeah. But either way, I, I mean, we threw our points in there. I mean, like I said, I'm not 100% sure in my own opinion, so. <laughs> And that's and that's partially why I'm running a warder. I picked I picked one that was more defensive well, to kind of ease you into it a little bit. Also, and, I trust you with I trust you're not gonna try to fuck me over intentionally too. So you know, yeah, there's also that you have to have trust in your own players. That's basic. Yeah, and I, so I see some things and I go, well, that's a little much. But then I don't, you know, I don't think you're gonna just throw that at me all at once or anything either. So yeah. I'm I'm hoping to cook you like the frog in the pot, and eventually, eventually you're cooked, and you're like, oh, Path of War is not so bad, it's not so crazy, um, but yeah. So, and and the the part that I'm actually I'm actually disappointed in is um, the next game we're probably going to run is probably going to be Strange Aeons. Eons. Hey, I don't know. I honestly don't. Know. If you want to oh. do that, you can play Psionic character if you want to. I actually read somewhere Psionic character in that campaign is probably not good because they get it, screwed up by yeah. being in fear. 
that and would so, be a really bad well, that, no, that's idea. Psychic. That's not psionic. Oh, that's you said psionic. Oh, I wanted to. play like your, uh, whatever you call it. What was that? Um, Cyblade. No, Soul Knife. That's it. Soul Knife. Yeah, yeah. Soul Knife. Oh, I want to play that. that. I'd probably let you do that. I just, like I said, I don't let anybody play whatever the hell they feel like playing. It's just, you know. Yeah. I do want to play that sometime. I'm really, what the heck is Pathfinder doing? They haven't gone around. They're, I really thought they'd make a Vudrani adventure path at some point, and that's totally where I want to play a Soul Knife in. I don't see one yet, but it's... Well, because they have to do that entire other continent, which, that's a lot of work. Yeah, that's a good point. I thought they're they're slowly like, expanding outwards, but it, that might not be for a while. I thought they had an island, the impo or maybe that was something else. Oh, Jamre. Yeah. The Impossible just, Kingdom. Yeah. Oh, that's... Uh, that's not necessarily like Vudrani inspired, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's Vudrani. That's okay. Well, then take a look. is basically a uh, province of Vudrani or something like that. But yeah, it's, it's sort of like uh, it's sort of like Kadira is to whatever the Hadisha Empire is. Yeah. Oh. is part of Vudra. Take our asses there, because I want to shiv someone with a knife that doesn't exist. <laughs> but. But no, actually, for Strange Aeons, I totally have an awesome character idea. I want to play a normal human fighter, plain Joe, that slowly gets twisted and horrifying as the campaign goes on. That's fine with me. Something like uh, uh, there's a mutation fighter, and oh, so... Yeah, that's a pretty cool one, actually. And then, and then Eldritch Guardian. So... Uh, my my eventual plan is, Eldritch Garden gives you a uh, gives you a familiar. I was gonna take a skunk, and by the end, and I was gonna take tumor familiar, preserve organs, and a couple other things. And by the end, I've got this familiar that runs around the inside of my rib cage and comes out and attacks, and <laughs> and I'm just mutated all over. It's gonna be awesome. That's pretty gross, actually. But yeah, yeah, <laughs> That's a whole idea, though. This yeah, went in a re weird direction at the player. end, but I thought I was the crazy one around here. Okay. <laughs> Guess but not. I'm afraid we have to call time on this uh, podcast, but uh, maybe we'll have a follow-up here shortly oh, after. By, by the way, Doug, did you want to plug anything before we left you? Uh, well, hey, I, I appreciate you having me on. I want to come back again real soon, and I appreciate the, the, uh, the opening to plug. Uh, please check out The Dragon's Horde uh, by Flaming Crab Games. I'm an author on there. We have two two uh, we have two books out, Magic Arms and Armor and Rings, Rods, and Staves, and there will be a third one coming out soon. Uh, check it out. It's gotten re good reviews by NZ Geist, and uh, actually a couple, my, a couple of my items keep getting up, coming up in his reviews, so I'm really thrilled about that. So thanks for giving me an opportunity to plug yeah. that. It's awesome. Yeah. Can't plug your friends. Who can you plug? They're only a, they're <laughs> only a few bucks, guys. I mean, you know, Doug's got featured items in there, so of course we're gonna help. Yeah, plug I think him. the most recent one was two ninety nine, so yeah. good deal. Yeah, check it out. One of the items in there is a uh, is a ring that you the anchor ring. You can literally shoot out uh, a dimensional anchor and drag a creature back through the portal it tried to escape through. So. That's that interests it. you. Some other, there's some other awesome artists in there, or uh, authors in there that you might re recognize from the boards, and they're all, all the items are awesome. So, check it out. Anyways, I think that's about all we have for this evening. <laughs> all right. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> hey, it's always a pleasure, Doug. Scanning <laughs> or otherwise. So this is more signing out. And Mike saying, "See you later." Keep it nerdy, guys. <laughs> See ya. The theme music used for this podcast, Orc March by Snowflake, featuring Wolf Sebastian and Spinning Merkaba, is available from CC Mixter under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 license. You can find it at dig.ccmixter.org or find a direct link to it and its license information in our Blind Sense podcast descriptions on either YouTube or or soundcloud.com. You can also give us something more to talk about next time, or talk with Mike about your best wizard build, by emailing volantrix at gmail.com. 
That's Volantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X.